I'm here at the Encore in Las Vegas. Today I'm interviewing Alex Levin, who is the co-founder of LNR, which is a strategic design and tech firm in New York City. Alex and I are actually friends from back when I lived in New York, and today we're going to talk about the future of autonomous vehicle design. I wake up in a city that doesn't sleep. Cheers. I hope Cheers. you're drinking during this uh, interview. Nike making an autonomous car would be cool. Man, that would be cool. It's It's got to drive you to tennis lessons or something, though. And the, it's got to have some sport element. The too. solutions would sit so nicely on the side of a vehicle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here's a question. What's your vision of autonomous vehicles in cities, but maybe even specifically to Vegas, since you've had a very much uh, close to Very city? good question. I almost never come to the Strip, and most of the reason is because I don't feel comfortable, you know, drinking a lot and then driving home, so I kind of like throw a lot of house parties and stick to my hood. And I can very confidently say that when autonomous vehicles become a thing, I'm going to be hanging out on the Strip a lot more because that is my major barrier is having to drive places. That's the exact problem that autonomous vehicles can really prevent is yes. like people still get in their cars, driving after drinking, and I, I actually think there will be by a, a thousand X less car crashes. This is actually something that I don't see people talk a lot about in any sort of online media is the the potential there is to create new car interiors. Oh yeah. I don't even want to face forward when my vehicle is fully autonomous. So what what do you think the future of car interiors is gonna look like? Well what's interesting is that it will probably pull from industries or I would even say spaces that have to do with socializing or not. Right, so when, if it has to do with, a, say, your personal autonomous vehicle, maybe it has more to do with a workspace, like it should have some type of workspace. I think, you know what, actually, there is a company that's starting to do this fairly well, is Sprinter. I mean, Mercedes-Benz with their Sprinter vans. They're starting to understand the layout of these things where, like, you have a chair, or you have a few chairs that are about you working in, and then maybe there's an opportunity for you to twist them and change around the orientation, which, to a car, maybe you have the back seat where you can pull it down and you can put storage in it, there isn't necessarily cars where they're trying to either encourage like socializing or not. And that happens with even public transportation too. Like public transportation, they just go, what's the most efficient layout that we could have that could help people with disabilities if they need to sit down or elderly people if they need to sit down and then also the people who need to stand. And when it comes to autonomous vehicles, there's going to be single uses for them at a time for trips. Each trip you'll have a potentially single use. Maybe they'll be multi-use, but at least they need to be able to change if you are with all of your friends. I might say that in a phrase, which is work beats play. Yes, yes. I your mean, yes. car has to do it, has to do both. Yeah, I guess to go back to the interior, I think what's going to be really fun for a designer, from a designer's perspective, for interiors of autonomous vehicles is managing like the the uh, the value that the consumer would have if you were to buy your own personal autonomous vehicle as a single male in his early 30s. One, how expensive do you think that actually will be? Fairly expensive. As that grows and develops, are you changing out the interior? Do we all have the same outer shell and all we're doing it almost like our apartment buildings? Are we changing out the interiors like this? I'm like already across? more impressed by interiors and I recently have been watching a lot of Grant Cardone on YouTube. He drives around his badass Rolls Royce all the yeah, time. Yeah. And uh, the top of it has a star roof. Yep. So you look up at it and it's a bunch of stars. And I was also just on an Emirates flight coming back from India uh, three weeks ago. And what I noticed that Emirates does is the exact same thing is they do a star roof. This is something you don't see in most cars. And I see little things happening in other cars in the interior that make it almost more like a party than, or like just like a, you're kind of like, am I even in a car? Yeah, yeah. Type of place to be in. And 
I think that really is the future of car interiors, and it's really going to expand a lot. It gets close to that, too, because then you could have even a blend of the two, where it's like you have a nice exterior, but also interior, but the design, the interior design of this autonomous vehicle, it's for just the space itself. We're about to see something really interesting. Like, even what Tesla has with that touchscreen, it's fun, it's great, really interesting. It's definitely uh, an innovation based off of what the dashboard is, but when you and don't need to worry do. about driving. What, yes. what can you yes. do? Yes, and what's the difference between you looking out of a window of your autonomous vehicle, and it's actually showing you like with overlaid user interfaces of the things that you're driving by. Okay, that's or interesting. Or whatever. Because I want to tie that into something I've been thinking a lot about lately with uh, what I'd like to be able to do with an autonomous vehicle. What I would love to be able to do is not have to drive my car and just enjoy the experience that's happening all around me. Yep. And I I think that's the, the first part of autonomous vehicles, but when you really add AR into it, I think when you start to really become a true environmentalist, you start to care about like, what kind of tree is that? What, what kind of birds are those around me? And that's where AR can actually start to make your experience in nature a lot more interesting. One of my concerns, I would say, is just making sure that we're not putting too much technology in between us and the outside world if it actually isn't helping the out helping us interact with the outside world. It's not just there because it's... I think you're right at it. That really digs on the major concern I think a lot of people talk about with AR, which is we don't want to go deeper into our phones. We don't want to go deeper into our computers. And how do we figure out a way to actually get closer with the world around us right. while having nature? That's exactly it. I want you to tell the viewers what is the best piece of advice that you could give to the 22-year-old entrepreneur out there? Best piece of advice that I would give to a 22-year-old entrepreneur would be to stay curious um, and I would say focus on something that you truly love, that truly interests you. And by saying curious, I guess what I mean is ask a lot of questions, don't be afraid to be wrong. And really try to dig for the answers that might not be right there in front of you. Thanks for watching. This has been great. I hope you've enjoyed our discussion on the future of autonomous vehicles and design. Um, Alex, this guy, yeah, we'll, we'll see him soon, I hope. Thank you. Yeah, thanks guys.